Um, w, I'm expecting you to be truthful with me, Mr. Rosenthal. Well, it's true. Uh, R, well, it's true. We're smart. We are powerful. And at the proper time, we will mix it. We will mix up your Gentile women with the blacks. And in 50 years, you'll be all mixed up. Niggers love to something your white women, and we encourage it by using them to our advantage. W, I recall you saying that the blacks serve a purpose. R, yes. We will use them to a great advantage. It was primarily a Jewish merchant ship and Jewish run slave ships, run slave auctions that the blacks got to America. W, and tried to destroy them after you have used them, I presume. If necessary, yes. R, if necessary, yes. You and I know they're inferior people, a dumb race, but can be useful with the use of money. I mean real big money. Niggers will do anything for money. So when the time comes, you might even live to see it. We will have the complete control while you stupid Christians are awaiting for your Christ the imposter to return as your savior. W, you sound bitter. R, not at all. Why should I be bitter? We are on top. W, and when this whole sordid story becomes known, the result will be an aroused citizenry, an angry citizen citizenry who will want to destroy you. R, how? I ask you how. You can't reach the people. We have it all under such control that no one, no one, or nobody can, nobody can people unless it is done through our media control. Who has ad control of the mass media in the 20th century? Chairman of ABC, um, the president of CBS, and it's going through the names. I'm not going through all these names. All right, if you want all these names, you can go through it yourself. All right. Let me just go right here. We have sewed it up. We have infected your churches completely. And we now control the school system in the United States. It is a reality that we have complete control of organized Christianity almost everywhere completely. And they're wrong. Um, they're actually right. They have control over it, but they're not teaching you the right way. They're teaching you all the foul things, all right? W, I find so many things you say to be repulsive. Um, the way you say things are... It's what you wanted to hear or what you would, wouldn't would have paid good money for this interview. Or you wouldn't have paid good money for this interview. Uh, w, so long as you are truthful with me, but you still haven't answered the question I posed long back. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was a Jew? Um, R. As I said, Jake could give you a really intelligent answer. I know that most of our friends, kids, and people I grew up with, in fact, of all of our friends, I say of all of them, don't believe Christ was a Jew. He was an imposter, and millions of people all over the world now believe that Christianity was founded on untruth and deliberate incorrect translations of your Bible. Christ was a fraud. Even the National Council of Churches agreed that there were false translations of the book your people respect. It's built on lies. This comment can hardly be regarded as coming from a true Christian source since the National Council of Churches was organized by Jews and it's theology, theologically, theologically, theology is controlled by them. W. According to the latest scholarly research, your ancestors are not Israelites but Mongolians and Asianatics from Eastern Europe and Western Asia. So your ancestors were thousands of miles from the Holy Land. They never, ever saw the Holy Land, proving that your people were not the chosen people of God. R. So what? What difference does it make? R. We have been taught that big lie for many you, not many years that Jews are God's chosen people. So it makes a, so it does make a difference, a very grave difference. R. What grave difference? W. Does it not prove that the great majority of Jews today are Khazar in origin. Your ancestors never trod the lands where Christ, Yahweh Shai, walked. They never knew Jerusalem and Palestine, so how could Mr. R interrupted R shouting, What the hell does what the hell difference does it make now? Alright. W 
I find so many things that you have said as being repulsive, and your arrogant manner is in boasting, as it were, to admittedly being part of this gigantic, this heinous plot against mankind. And at times you attempt to brush things off by saying, what difference does it make? Uh, so much of so much of what you have admitted staggers me. In fact, I lack words. Mr. Rosenthal interrupts here. R. That's because you're a Gentile. You don't understand. You never will. Until it's too late. And my hope, personally, is that the American people do not. Mr. R. Pauses there. W. There is so much of what you have said that, as an individual, people may not believe you. That they may not believe this interview. Mr. R. interrupts. That is why we have the control today. One of the reasons your people do not believe that is that it was possible for any people or race to accomplish what we have within a couple of hundred years. The Gentile is stupid. We are an intelligent. I'm going to be a very important person in and around Washington and soon. I intend to become nationally prominent. You are going to hear and read about me in the future. I'm young, and I have the guts to tell you more than any other Jew will ever dare tell you, at least publicly. I stuck my neck out, white. Some of you, some of what I have told you is part of the inner, in, in, it's part of the inner invisible world of Jewry. All right, W. Looking at your, looking at you now, as I denote your change, I see you as a despicable, despicable bastard. All of you. Uh, he interrupts. R. No one calls me a bastard and is away with it. You are all, W, you are all contemptible, base, and detestable. R, I'll knock your goddamn head off if you call me a bastard. W, I wouldn't try it if I were you. I, too, have friends. Many of them would like, to, would like a chance to get to you. So let's keep this on a formal basis as it was intended at the beginning. Mr. R then said something which I ha asked him to spell. He spelled O Y B. A Y, and added, um, is Nia, and when asked what it meant, he said, I would not understand, but I'm including in it because it's on the tape. Um, w, many times when referring to a person being a Jew, I've heard it said, well, I understand he is a Presbyterian or a Catholic, so I would like your opinion or explanation. How do Jews feel about another Jew who becomes a Christian scientist or converts to any other religion? Is he... Or is she no longer a Jew? Or that can be best answered. Well, let me put it this way. I don't know what your mother or father were, what nationality I mean. Isn't that the same thing that we say? That your your father controls your nationality? Alright. Uh, w, my father was British, English, and my mother was German. Well, if you decided to... Or, well, if you decided to study Zionism or the Talmud, or actually wanted to become converted and attended the synagogue, would that erase your English or German heritage? W, of course not, but I wanted to hear, hear from a learned Jew. What you have said then is that he or she is always a Jew. R, it's stupid, stupid. We are what we are. No matter what we join or adopt, it doesn't change what we are. I'm a Jew and nothing can change me. Because I take up another religion, such stupidity. This concept is verified in scripture by the rhetorical question, can, a, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopards his spots? And in the parable of the tares and the wheat, we find that the tares, the children of the wicked, are utterly destroyed. All right? None are saved from the destroying fire. None are converted to wheat into wheat. God is not going to change the tares into something that they never work. W, but the Jews are a great part of this deceit. R, we have a talent for confusing your issues. Um, w, you are masters of deceit, and this cunning practice of yours have, uh, has allowed your people to infiltrate the governments throughout the world. R, why not? Why shouldn't we take over the banks, the universities, the church, and the government if the Gentiles are not intelligent enough to run them? I could not have talked this way a few years ago, but now it is different. There is nothing to undo our strategy in the world today so I can speak much more freely. What I've disclosed may help other Jews to speak out if they have any guts. We are not a... Uh, pusillanimous race. 
pusillanimous race. I'm going to have to read that word up. You're very sure of yourself and your people, aren't you? Are. We have. We may be divided in many things, but nothing ever actually separates us. W, who is we, are my people. The Jews are as one. When it, com when it counts most, no incident can ever divide us. Down through the centuries, Jews have learned that they cannot trust other people. Thus, the Jewish radical bond is their greatest bond. W, I've heard Jews fight each other with venom. R, ah, uh, that's entirely different. Sure, we will fight one another, but as I say, when it counts, most we're as one. Our forte, white is division and duplicity. It is an infallible weapon, and we are skillful. Perhaps perfection is in its application. You don't have the intelligence to complete to compete. All right. Uh, w, but we have a culture that you Jews will never understand or equal. Uh, R, Jews have a family life or culture requires a high standard in education. We establish standards so that our kids exceed that of their parents. Our people continue to show a dramatic education, educational advancement. Our kids' success doesn't depend entirely on schools but on the family, and we are damn proud of these accomplishments. You, cannot, you can't complete more than 12,000 doctors are graduated from medical schools in the United States every year, and almost 10,000 of them are Jews. So only 2,000 is something else, all right? Among the law students of Jewish percentage is even higher. Jews are on such a solid foundation here in the United States than that any kind of opposition to our control will only be temporary. You know, we laugh about, you know, we laugh about the six million story, just like the story that Christ was a Jew and the God and the God's chosen people story. This should show people that we have a solid a solidarity like none other in the world. Jews have a closeness to other Jews whom they have never seen or perhaps even heard of. As it is said, blood is thicker than water. W. Mr. Rosenthal, I hope you haven't lied to me in any of this interview because if you did, we, would, we could retaliate on you, understand? R. What have I told you is true, all of it. I don't need to lie. W, I have found the Jews' passion is greed, profit, and the destruction of Christianity. Am I correct? R, I cannot speak for all Jews. W, I'm speaking of the great majority of Jews. Am I right? R, maybe most Jews feel that way, but there's nothing wrong with that. W, I think you just go on and on because there is a bitterness within you, and perhaps you say the things... Um, that even you do not believe some of the things you say are almost unbelievable. R. Well, I don't give a good damn, slack you, well, I don't give a good goddamn what you believe. I've given you the honest answers and opinions. Now, no more questions, and don't forget our agreement. If I learn that the tapes are used other than what we agreed upon, you will suffer serious consequences. Do you understand? W, I understand, and now, Mr. Rosenthal, here's the balance of the money agreed upon for this interview. If you want to know more about that, read it yourself. It's on the Internet. You know, get the book and read it yourself and do your own study, all right? All power, glory, and honor to Yahweh Ba'a Shami Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone for showing me this great truth. And Shalom and Shalom and Salutations and Shalom. And, uh, and honors to my brothers on the four corners pumping out this truth with sincerity, long suffering, and longevity. Shalom, Akhiyam. Kwam, Yashar Allah.